This is a second tutorial in a set of introductory tutorials for getting started with Flash. And this tutorial will cover basic Flash animations. Here I created a folder uh, named it Flash Animation. You can name it whatever you like. It's an empty folder. We'll put all our files in, in here. If you open up Flash, we'll be using Flash CS4. Go ahead and click on Create New Flash File. It can be either two or three. Control S to save. Name it whatever you like. And make sure it's in the Flash Animation folder that we create on the desktop. To begin animating, we're first going to need a visual asset. I'm just going to create a green, a green ball. And selection tool, V. Select it all. And right click, convert symbol. We'll name it green ball. You can name it whatever you like. It adds it to our library here. Uh, we can drag and drop as many of these movie clips as we like, but we only need one. So move it to the left and go to the timeline. You'll see that we have one frame of animation, which is no animation at all. Each of these cells represent a frame of animation just like the pages on the flipbook. So go ahead and cl right click on our single frame and click on select motion tween, create motion tween. So the tween has been created for us. By default, it populates 30 frames, which is about a second's worth because our frame rate is 30 frames per second. You can increase or decrease that. We're going to increase it to 60 seconds or 60 frames, which is two seconds. In this motion tween, um, you can select whichever frame you like with this slider over here. Um, we'll go to 60 and move our asset to the right and you see a motion tween has been created for us. This is uh, the motion path here and if we press control enter to test our movie you'll see that it does move from left to right over two seconds. And you can adjust this tween for example you could curve it downward and the animation adjusts accordingly. Also, you can select any intermediate frame and change the location. Also reflect it in the animation. And uh, if you want to do a shape tweening, this is motion translated from one position to another, but if you want to do shape tweening, go ahead and double click on our green ball here. And you see we've focused in on editing just this green ball movie clip which is applied to every instance of the green ball that we create and has been created. Uh, every movie clip actually has a timeline of its own. You'll see that we're back to the default of a single frame. And let's go ahead and click on frame 30 and press F6 to create a new keyframe. It's duplicated our green ball into every single frame between our first and 30th. So on the 30th frame, let's get rid of our green ball and put in something completely different, such as a blue square. Okay. Um, and then go back to the timeline, right click on any of these frames between 1 and 30 or 1 and 29. And this time, instead of selecting create motion tween, we'll do create shape tween. And what that has done is added in all the intermediate frames from 1 to 30, which will make it look as if our green ball is morphing into our final blue square. And just press enter. What enter does without the control, if you press enter, then it tests the current movie that you're uh, working on right now, which is the green ball. So yeah, as you can see, it's animated. So now we'll exit back to the scene, our main movie, and let's see that run. As you can see, the shape tween repeats once, so it goes through the whole cycle twice. That's because, as you re probably remember, 
we specified 30 frames in our ball movie clip over here, which is one second. But our main scene has two seconds worth. So as soon as it's done traversing through all 30 frames, it'll just repeat over and over again. That's why we see that repeat. Um, let's go ahead and drag this over to 60 so that now we have a single shape tween and motion tween synchronized. Okay, now let's try some uh, translating in the in the in three dimensions. If you select, go back to our scene and select frame 60, our ball here. If you go to the properties panel, you'll see 3D position and view. There is this Z property here. You can just click and drag that to uh, put it farther away or closer. Let's put it about that close and move it so that we can see it. And now you'll see that the ball appears to, or the ball turning into a square appears to approach the camera slightly. Uh, to make it a little more obvious, um, let's move this back. So it starts out far away and it will end up close. Alright, there's that. And you can also rotate your movie clips. If you go to Tools, there's a 3D rotation tool here. And let's rotate it halfway through. So select uh, close to 30 and ro we'll rotate it about almost 90 degrees on the y-axis, about the y-axis. And so basically it goes from not rotated to rotate it and it remains rotated to the end. Alright, finally what we want to do is add to our motion uh, a easing. Easing basically defines how the uh, animation uh, progresses. For example, if you scroll down in the motion editor you'll see eases section press on the plus. Well, let's choose a bounce easing. And if you scroll down, you'll see bounce has been added. And you can adjust the bounce value, but we haven't seen what the default does yet, so let's first do that. If you scroll up, you'll see basic motion x. This describes the change in x value of our mo uh, movie clip throughout this animation. Basically, it goes from this coordinate to this x coordinate, which between which is apparently about 349 pixels. But now, instead of just going from this point to this point in a constant speed, at a constant speed, we'll apply a bounce ease, which essentially causes it to go from here to here as if it's bouncing back and forth, as you'll soon see. We'll try one more easing effect here. Now let's try adding um, let's try adding a spring effect instead. Go back to X instead of bounce. We'll try spring. So as you can see, it begins here and it springs back and forth over here. So we've covered we've covered motion tweening. We've covered uh, shape tweening from the ball to a square and we've also covered translating in three dimensions as well as rotating in three dimensions and applying different eases to our uh, tweens. So these are the tools you can use. Um, obviously it hasn't been applied very practically here. This was for only for the purposes of introducing the tools but you'll see in later tutorials where we actually use these tools for uh, practical purposes in your website or your flash application.